If you're installing shingles or any other roofing products for a living, this video is for you, especially if your end game is to open a roofing business on your own. I will explain why best installer, fastest shinglers out there make the worst business owners. But before we start, I want you to watch small clip by Michael Gerber, author of E-Myth, why technicians make bad business owners. The problem in American business, ladies and gentlemen, is the person who owns that business. The problem in American business is that so-called entrepreneur. The problem is people who go into business in this country simply don't know what they're doing. And they create chaos and catastrophe every place they look. Because the fact of the matter is they're not entrepreneurs. The e-myth is the entrepreneurial myth. And the entrepreneurial myth is at the foundation of every single business problem you will uncover in every single small business in American business as you walk up and down the street. Who is it then that goes into business? If it's not an entrepreneur, who starts that business down the street? Well, what I'm going to suggest is that it isn't an entrepreneur, it's a technician suffering from an entrepreneurial seizure. <laughs> and what I mean by that is the carpenter becomes a contractor, the bookkeeper becomes a bookkeeper, the attorney opens up a legal practice, the doctor opens up a medical practice, the graphics designer opens up a graphics design business, each and every one of them believing, because I understand how to do the technical work of a business, I understand how to run a business that does that technical work. And it's 180 degrees from the truth. Knowing how to do the work in a business has nothing to do with creating a business that works. And it is the fatal assumption behind the failure of almost every single business you walk into. Every single business around. Because the owner of that business, the founder of that business, does not start a business as an entrepreneur would. The founder of that business starts a business for absolutely the wrong reason. They start a business to get rid of the boss. They start a business to get rid of the boss because they're working for somebody else. They're doing it, doing it, doing it, day in and day out. A master technician, a master auto mechanic, a master poodle clipper and they're sitting there saying to themselves why am I doing this for this guy I could be doing this for me hell any dummy can run a business you said I'm working for one <laughs> and knowing that you decide I could do this as well as this guy and you start a business to get rid of the boss and instantly do what you never should have done create a job Instead of going to work on their business, most people go to work in their business. Instead of going to work on their business to replicate a vision they have in their mind, they go to work in their business to replicate the only vision they have in their mind, which is that of work. The technician replicates a picture of work. The entrepreneur replicates a picture of a business that works. What I'm suggesting is you do not need to hire experts if you've created an expert system that leverages ordinary people to produce extraordinary results and that's the secret of success behind every extraordinary business. Just to clarify, I'm not trying to call out you guys who install every day. If you're the fastest installer, good for you. I was too. Installation was my sport for five years. I've, I've changed like 10 trades. I've done siding installation for a living for like six months every single day installing siding for like 10 bucks an hour i've installed insulation not installation in the attics but like nasty stuff in the walls in the crawl space is one of the nastiest jobs i ever um, have you know i was getting paid like five six dollars per bag of installation it was very nasty sometimes i would make 50 60 dollars per day uh, i think at the best i could make three hundred dollars a day we were hustling on the way home. We were driving, sticking our heads through the window so the wind can blow the nasty fiberglass from our faces. Always dirty, sometimes working nights, sucking all insulation from the attics after fires because it sucks in, that smoke never goes away. I mean, that was one of my jobs. I worked for a year and a half in a cabinet shop. Uh, for two years, I worked for a general contractor doing floors, tiles, painting. I flipped a lot of homes. I worked for Freddie Mac, 
anime contractor. I was subcontracting flipping houses. I would do one house per week. Uh, we would come in on Monday and by Saturday, the whole house would be painting. We change floors. I have two, three guys under me. I have sprayers, I have pressure washers. So I do understand the sport of installation. If installation is a sport, I've been there. You go on the roof and you're trying to lay those shingles as fast as possible. I recently I've um, came across a um, world fastest shingler YouTube channel. Um, I want to see more of those channels. I, channels like that motivates you know young installers to get in the trades to become better, better installer. And the problem with it when it comes to opening your business is shift of mentality just because you become better at installation doesn't mean that you're going to be a good business owner when you open your own business as a matter of fact i would say opposite if you are the best of the best that's going to be your enemy when you open your business because most likely you will compare everybody against yourself so i was that guy floors was my business my first business that i opened was a flooring business and for the first six months if you work for me you were only allowed to open boxes and sweep in front of me i was installing every single board i would not let anybody in because i thought that my quality is unmatchable i thought that nobody can install like i install it's my name on those floors it's my name on that siding it's my name on the carpentry and trim or on painting and then you know one day i was just pushed to the office because when you're installing it's really good to install and you know i have kids growing up right now and i wanted my kids to grow up and actually get in the trades I want to build that work ethic in them. I want them to work with their hands because I think it builds your character, but it's definitely for the young people, for young generation. When you're 50, 60, you should be managing position. You should be maybe owning a business, being consulting. You should be sharing your expertise. So it's definitely sport for youngsters. So you can do it for 10, 20 years, but your body is limited. You know, you're gonna have sick days, your knees, your elbows, your back. It's all gonna have limits. And I don't want your family, your future depend on your health. That's why I got out of it because I have five kids. And even in days when I was the best of the best, have lower back problems. And I could make five, 600 bucks a day, great money. You can make great money installing floors, installing siding, installing gutters, installing roofing shingles. But when you open a business, the rules change dramatically. It's completely different rules. Now you have to learn how to hire people. You have to learn how to manage, how to train. You have to shut down your ego and hire people better than you. You have to walk away sometimes knowing that your employee is not gonna do the job as good as you would. You still have to set up a standard, but they probably not gonna be as fast. Quality should not be sacrificed, but you need to understand that if you hiring people who can match you, they should not be in business, they should be working on themselves. So as a business owner, you have to hire people who are smart, but you have to um, also hire people who are mediocre or average, and you have to build a system where average people can produce far beyond average results, superior results, so you can raise your company to the top in your market. So what am I saying? I'm saying this. If you are installer and you're good at what you do, you are your own enemy. I meet roofing business owners every year who fail for this reason because they never can learn to delegate the most important tasks in their offices. They never can learn how to run actual business. So here's my advice to you. If you've been installing shingles for years and you're planning to open a business, I highly recommend you to start hiring people. Don't try to do it yourself. If you are the business, you don't have a business, you have a job. And it's the hardest job you'll ever get. Because if, you, if your business depends on you, whether it's installing, whether it's selling, it doesn't matter what you do. But if your business is you, you don't have a business, business have you, you'll never grow. You have to hire people even if you don't feel like hiring them. If you don't know if you're going to make money, you have to hire people if you're serious about growing a business. Because if you just installing shingles while you're working for yourself you just change the boss now you don't have a boss who pays your paycheck but you have a homeowner who pays your paycheck to install there's no difference you're still just an installer 
I mean, that LLC, it's the most misleading in your business name because you think you work for yourself, but you don't. You have a full-time job and that job is limited to your physical abilities. So if you break your leg, if something happens to you, you're out of business. You lose your job because you never have a business, to be fair. So what you have to do is you have to hire at least one person, make that person accountable, try to teach him, be a good leader to him, and then get another one, and another one, build an organization, develop yourself as a leader. You're already probably a good installer, but it doesn't make you a good business owner. So becoming a business owner is just like becoming an installer. It takes years of practice and it's different practice. Now you have to learn how to delegate, how to trust other people, how to manage them when they make mistakes, how not to compare them with yourself, and how to live your life where everybody else, you know, not as good as you are and be okay with that because any CEO of almost any major organization, they're talented, but they have a lot of people working for them who is not as talented and it's fine. But to build strong roofing business, you have to get away with a roofer mentality that I'm the best. Nobody can be like me. I mean, come on, seriously, you think nobody can beat you. I can probably beat most roofing installers out there if that would be my business if i would choose to if you want to challenge me on on the roof i'll go against you and i'll prove to you that you're not the only one who installs shingles as a matter of fact there's thousands of other roofers who can do the job but i will challenge you become a better business owner because i know that's where my challenge is today i don't want to be the best roofer i want to be the best business owner because i want my roofers my crews my team to be successful. It's not about me, my ego, it's about my business, my systems, to build a legacy, because I always say, there's only two reasons to be in business. One, to sell it, and two, to pass it to your kids. If you don't feel like what you're doing right now will help you to sell your business or to pass it to your kids, you don't have a business. Change your ways. It's good that you can install the shingles fast. Maybe you can even have a title of world fastest roofer, fastest roofer alive, it's okay, but it doesn't make you good at business and I want you to be successful business owner. If you're currently an installer and you wanna become a business owner, I'm here to help you on that journey. Let me know in comments below, contact me, all my information is description and I'll see you guys in the next video. If you are one of our existing students or have attended one of our classes in the past, please share your feedback in comments below. Don't forget to subscribe or like, that always helps.